then refer them to the internet page. <laughs> <laughs> the Wikipedia page. Anyways, is uh, the answer we didn't know. <laughs> is the answer we didn't know. <laughs> we did know. That's why we're here to share what we were going to do. Uh, and just to introduce everybody who uh, also were, uh, were on other shows that suffered the same fate, uh, shows that ended too soon, that had plans to do other things, uh, we'd be gathering some of those folks who were going to talk about those things. Uh, over here to my left, Mr. Andrew Shambliss. I uh, worked on a, a little show called Dollhouse. Another program called uh, Spartacus Vengeance. Uh, Vampire Diaries. And uh, currently Once Upon a Time. Uh, the aforementioned Ian Goldberg did Flash Forward. Terminator the Sarah Connor Connor. Once Upon a Time as well. Uh, now, Javier. Rijo, Mark Squatch. <laughs> you spelled that out for me. Uh, charm, medium, lost. Woo! <laughs> Jake 2.0 and uh, his own, the middleman. Uh, Javier was uh, nice enough to introduce me to Mr. Jose Molina. Uh, yeah. Jose is uh, the power player here. Dark Angel. Firefly. <laughs> Another Philly in show, Castle. Hagen. <laughs> Star Wars The Clone Wars. Terra Nova. Grimm. Personally, the end all, the all, uh, 
technology and cancellations. And anything, uh, anything before you started uh, working professionally in television? Anything as a kid that uh, I remember? Oh man, what's that? That's my best junior, Chuck Wagner, Tron, ripoff mm -hmm. on ABC, eighty four season. Nobody really. Season. 
<laughs> and, and, and then, you know, Wendy would be the middleman, the middleman would be in Tibet, and you wouldn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> we, we were just actually going to do part two of a cliffhanger that we never did. <laughs> And, and you had a plan, don't pretend like you didn't. Well, one of the things the plan goes out the window really. I mean, on 24, they had the whole, first, you know, every time, first of all, every time a showrunner says, well, we have a five year plan, bullshit. <laughs> it's there are children in the audience. It's, it's, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> there's children on the day, or something. You know, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is. <laughs> says, well, you know, I wrote out the entire series outline and it's on a big chief notebook and a uh, safe somewhere in Toluca Lake. That's correct. <laughs> well, wait a minute. We're talking about series that have things in safes. We're <laughs> talking very specific, specifically about here. Uh, well, Showrunners don't live in Toluca Lake. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they put the series plan there. No one's going to think to look in Toluca Lake. <laughs> the, the, point, the point is, you know, making a show is like jazz. It's not a symphony. And, and you know, like, the, there's, there's a story about the, the, the guys who did 24 who had the entire first season mapped out and they burned through all their story by the 10th hour of the first season. And they were like, what if Dennis Hunt was a Serbian, you know? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so it's, it's jazz. You have, to, you have to find in what you do the seeds for what you're going to do later on. And you have to throw the plan out most of the time. But that, that is a good point. And uh, I, I know on uh, a couple shows, uh, that have been on, invariably the thing that was going to be the finale turns out to be as early as like the fifth episode. Absolutely. Everything moves up. Was, is that your guys' experience as well? Yeah, I mean, um, like Dollhouse, we got lucky because we never thought we were going to have a second season. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, we were all working at other jobs and got phone calls saying, you got to come back. And we were, we were thrilled to do it, but we kind of went into the second season knowing you know, we shouldn't save stuff for later because there might not be a later. Um, so we're at least able to kind of work towards that. And, you know, even when we got canceled, we knew like five episodes ahead of time. So we were able to kind of ration everything up. Um, but I mean, that is an instance where you know, we did have a plan. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you, the, the writing on the wall changed the plans. Yeah, the writing on the wall changed the plan, <coughs> sped stuff up. I mean, I think that's, you know, some people's criticism of the end was that we kind of burned through the story quickly. But, Kind of, kind of <laughs> Sarah Connor was kind of an interesting case. Just, um, uh, um, because of the writer's strike, we only did nine episodes the first year, and we were like, we had a 13 order, and we were hoping to get a full 22. So, because of where the season ended, episode nine, <coughs> we ended it on unintentionally on a cliffhanger, and so it kind of changed how the second season opened and the whole trajectory of it, just based on having to stop in the middle. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing, and, and Javier, you were talking about that. Were you making uh, episodes during the time that you were getting feedback or, or ratings from the audience? And, on and the middle? Came, on the middle? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Did, that affect, did that affect even your plans? Uh, no, I mean, you know, the audience was so minuscule that you know, like, I just sort of go into a bar and look a leg and talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no, you know what, um, it, it, the, the, the funny thing is, you know, Middleman was a comic book, Middleman was a lot of things, and, and we, the I, I think Sarah can attest to the writing staff for such a tight knit group that I think we, we really were kind of our own best audience, and we just sort of all loved the show and loved each other's work so much that, that you know, we would kind of see what was going on in the outside world, but at least, you know, one of the benefits, I don't know if it's a benefit, but when you're only doing 12 episodes, you're just sort of in your own little bubble, and you don't really go crazy with fame, power, and glory to like you finish the first season and then you come back and you realize you're a success. So, uh, so since we never were a success and never came back from the first season, we, we never had the opportunity to become you know sort of uh, fixated on, on what was being said about the show. So it was, you know we were just focused on making twelve handcrafted little bizarre sort of I, like, I want to say gems, but the word that keeps coming to mind is booger. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, but I, I, I was actually just telling Sarah that, that there is something I can there is something I can say about the plan for the middleman that that even she doesn't know and, and that none of the middle writers in the room can actually uh, don't know. So there you go. Whoa, whoa. Well, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry, I took my face from the limit lock. There's a court. Wendy's uh, Wendy's uh, apprentice would have been her father. Uh, 
Wendy's father was a middleman who uh, was sent away from the earth, a relativistic speech. The middleman, if anybody is even into the show that much. <laughs> the middlemen were basically like, like the Green Lantern Corps, and every time a planet gets sophisticated enough, the O2 SDK sends a satellite with an iodine in it, and they form a middleman thing in the planet. So Wendy's dad was actually sent away from Earth to a relativistic speeds to handle a conflict in another world, so he would have come. So if, if the show had ever come to it, he would have come back, but he would have actually been younger than Wendy. So he would have actually become one of these, like, like the person that she has to train to be the new middleman. Well, my mind is blown. <laughs> yeah, so, cool. Let's uh, do that. <laughs> so since uh, Javier's getting into what might have been, you know, a lot of talk between me and uh, the writer's PA, The Walking Dead, uh, where I work, uh, we edited sloppily. You know what? Well, we edited well. Pardon me, Alex. Alex Tully Brown is the gentleman who did it. Six and a half minutes of the endings of these shows, but we're not sure. Six, is that too much for you, or do no, you want no, to see a little refresher? <laughs> I can't help but think I go to you into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sarah, you're on it. Okay, yeah, I'll leave the one girl to do the technical. Well done. Don't you two get 
get any ideas. <laughs> this here's no pleasure crap. <laughs>
Um, I think now we can start talking about, and then you started, Javier, about what we might have done or, or what the creators of those shows were planning to do with those shows if they had gone. I think when they pulled the lever on that flash forward thing, it would have been really cool if they woke up in the dollhouse universe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was the Los Angeles. That was building uh, the Los Angeles uh, DWT building. So uh, I think it'd be cool if they woke up next to Bob Newhart. Patrick Duffy in the show. Jose. Yes. Firefly. Yes. What might have occurred if it went on? Well, kind of what was going to occur is what occurred uh, a couple years after in Spring. Mm. Um, the there was a you know there was a plan to get into a uh, book's character who had uh, a backstory that we were going to get into uh, and Inara uh, and her backstory the fact that that she was terminally ill and um, that's why she wasn't connecting with who those were stories we didn't get to tell so what Joss did for Serenity was just take. The, the central story of the whole thing, which is the thing that kicks off the pilot, which is Rescue of the River. Um, and so that was what drove the whole series. It's, you know, we've got the students on board, and we've got the fans are coming after them. So he chose to focus on that story for, for the movie. And so that's, that is, I've heard different verses of this. Some people say that the movie is how season Two was going to end. I remember it being how season one was going to end, but that's where it was going. It was going to to Miranda and uh, and the past, and the reavers were made by Blue Sun and all that stuff that you guys know about. Him, so very cool. Uh, going from uh, Whedon to Whedon. Now you now you've done some Dollhouse comics. I've done some Dollhouse comics for Dark Horse. Um, what was that? Using any of the stuff that maybe you were going to do later? Some ideas that we have. I mean, what we would have done if the show had gone on is we would have done a show in the apocalyptic universe, because apocalypses are just more fun. Um, <laughs> I, I believe that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You roll down. It's a hell of a time. <laughs> uh, so it probably, you know, it would have been a show about Adele and Echo trapped in the dollhouse, and apocalyptic world outside, sending dolls out to help people. And this um, would be in 2020? This, this, this would have been, we had a whole timeline mapped out. The apocalypse would have happened in 2013, and then we had seven years to do seven seasons of apocalyptic doll. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now there's uh, six comic books. There you go. So how far into the, the, the seven years are you? Then? Well, I mean, well, the thing we did was when we did the finale, we jumped ahead to 2020 and told the end of the story. So you picked so up it, the No, we went back and they're filling in the blanks, nice. which is kind of fun. And, and it's ongoing? Uh, uh depends. So, on bring us some Yes. <laughs> uh, Ian, now, uh, Flash Forward had an interesting, an interesting thing happen. Uh, David Goyer, the creator of the show, or, or the showrunner of the show, uh, parted ways with ABC about halfway into the season. He had an idea for the ending. And then, you know, the people, uh, Lisa Swirling and Tim T. J. Lee, who took over, also had an idea. So there were sort of two endings yeah. set up for the future. What were, I, I mean, can help you a little bit. Yeah, what's, well, yeah. uh, <coughs> um, the one I remember us talking about at the end of the season, and you see some of it in the finale, by the way, co-written by Scott Gimple. Yeah. So, uh, I, I actually had written uh, two series finale. So, uh, I killed Shio's dead. <laughs> <laughs> the Reaper? Intentional or unintentional finales? Uh, neither, neither was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I really just put those down. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what we had talked about towards the end of the first season was that the blackout that happened at the end of the season it would be a different sort of blackout from the one we experienced the first time around, which is that people are flash forwarding to different points in the future. Some people would have flash forwards five minutes in the future, some people would go a hundred years. Some people's flash forwards would be a few seconds, some would be an hour. And so it would be like the, the final image of Charlie, the little girl, seeing herself way in the future, 
um, exploring a different kind of mosaic of how people's stories fit together. Um, and also the bigger mystery of what, what are the books causing the flash forwards. I have a pressing question. Yeah. Is it flash forwarding or flashing forward? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> you know, I don't know if people, I feel, that, that word rather, flash forward, was said probably like 15,000 times during the show. I think not once was it used as a verb. So, <laughs> so we have no idea of the conjugation, but I will say, if there had been a second season, we would have tackled that. <laughs> so we're going to flash forward to the conjugation. <laughs> um, I, I will say, uh, I, uh, I uh, emailed David Goyer about this. David Goyer is working on a show that I actually worked on with him uh, in the hiatus of Walking Dead. It's uh, called Da Vinci's Demons, and it's going to be on Stars. And I'm saying right here, right now, it's going to be excellent. Uh, but I asked him what he had in mind, uh, you know, that five-year plan. Because actually, one thing that was funny with that show is he actually kept it from us, much like Javier did. What was, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, uh, I'm just saying, uh, David Doyer also, you know, kept a lot from us. Yeah, 15 minutes, my God. We have to open up the floor in a second. Um, then I can rifle through. So that it may swallow you alive. <laughs> um, I will say that David's plan, and I'm, I'm just going to slaughter it here. Um, That's what you do, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I wrote I, I the series finale of Charlie's Angels, but I don't know. No one's thanking me. I don't know. <laughs> um, David, uh, basically within the seasons, uh, well, even within the first season, there was this device that was found. It was this device that's based on this real thing called the Antikytherian device that was found in the uh, Mediterranean Sea and it's this ancient computer that they dug up and it's like thousands of years old but it works with all these cogs and everything. Uh, the idea being that they had found this and that they were going to use this to predict or they figured out that it predicted when another flash forward was going to come. And Basically, over the five years, and I am destroying this, which is a shame, um, the flash forwards were going to be happening quicker and quicker. The next season was going to be six months ahead. Um, it was nine months, I believe, in the first season. Um, next season was going to be six months. Next season after that, like three months. Uh, so it got to, I think, like in the fourth or fifth season, there would only be three days left. And what they saw after that was everybody in the world, when they passed out, saw nothing except for 17 people. Those 17 people were the only people, I guess, who had a future on Earth. And one of them was going to be Olivia, Olivia. Sonia Walker's character. Yes. And uh, they were going to, those 17 people all around the world were going to piece together what happened, and Mark Benford, who Joseph Fiennes played, and uh, I'm probably not pronouncing Fiennes right, am I? Uh, and uh, Lloyd, Lloyd, Simcoe. Lloyd Simcoe, played by Smashes, Jack Davenport. Um, basically, we're going to try and figure it out, and a big part of this was Lloyd was going to figure out a way to send a message in the past, thousands of years, and there were plans for the Antithecarian device. And they will realize that the device that had sort of led the way the whole time, they had sent back themselves. And, they were going to solve it, and it was going to be amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't want to no, no, please. No, I, I have a question. A question that I'd like to throw to the panel, if you don't mind. Love yeah. it. Now, so we've all had our hearts broken by shows that we wished, you know, had ended differently or, 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 or later or whatever. I, I know. I mean, I, for example, I, I could give that same speech you just gave about what the original conception was for the ending of Lost. Mm -hmm. um, but but there's something. Oh yeah, plan was king. Yeah, but my my, my question is. The shows that, to, and just, do, would you, on shows that, in which that happened, would you rather have known, or is, is there something in your imagination that, you know, after hearing that, do you think it would have been, it's better because you actually have a wide open space to play with in your imagination and you can know what, you know, you can make up the ending for yourself? Is that a factor for any of you as viewers, not as creators? Are you saying uh, if a show ends prematurely, at least there's that comfort that you Yeah, do you wish you'd known, or, or, or is it more fun to make it up in your head based well, on what they've given you to play with? I would say this, though. I think you're 100% right, Javier. It's like, uh, 
there's just no way the thing that I just laid out <laughs> would probably have happened that way. In the first season, uh, the finale for the first season turned out to be halfway in the season, and so many different things changed. It's almost, I don't know, it's, it's a cool sort of uh, B-side, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, or, or a demo version or something like that. Um, believe me, even if that feels 